Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, YouTubers. This is Anonymous T. Hope you're having an amazing day today. So today I'm going to discuss season two of Love is Blind because I have no idea what's happening this season. This season is an absolute hot mess. Um, it is nothing like season one at all. And I had kind of a feeling it wouldn't be. Um, these are the same producers that produce Married at First Sight. And we all know what Married at First Sight has turned into. So I expected at some point we were going to get there in this franchise. I just wasn't expecting it to happen so soon. Um, there's just a lot to get to. I'm really mainly going to focus kind of overall the first nine episodes because at this point we're really just waiting to see if these people actually follow through with these marriages or not. But I could make an argument that none of them could end up getting married when it's all said and done because of how dysfunctional this season has been from the start. Um, the whole, I'm just going to start right off, you know, with Danielle and Nick, because that's where we left off with episode nine with the first wedding. And it already looks like it's going to be a bleep show. Like it already looks like it's going to be a bleep show. Um, I, I, I can't gauge Nick. And that's like the craziest thing about all of this. I cannot gauge Nick at all on what he is going to do. I do know sometimes they like to be dramatic and try to make you think one thing as well as the other and all this and that. But to be completely honest with you, I have no idea what his decision is going to be. I honestly don't. I mean, they could be playing us and he says yes like normal, but I also wouldn't be surprised if he said no either. I mean, who picks a fight, you know, right on your wedding day or right before your wedding day that you should say no. Who does that? And then, you know, Daniel's mom, she's so confident that this is going to be a thing, but basically said she's going to kick his bleep if he says no to her. And he just looks so stressed and he looks so upset. I mean, I would think he would say yes, but um, I don't know. It's just been a wild ride, you guys. It has been a wild ride. Shake. Oh, my gosh. Shake is calling, you know, his fiance, his aunt, that she reminds him of his aunt. They both are normally attracted to white people. So it's just all a mess. It is all a mess. We have no idea what is going to happen with these two either. Even if they do go through with the marriage, is he going to ever consummate the marriage? We have no clue because he looks like he's putting on an act to me. And I just don't understand after all this time, after all this interactions with all the other couples, you say all of these positive things, but you're not doing anything to increase the intimacy to see if there is something there and you just complain all day and you overthink all day. I personally never would have even accepted his proposal in the first place because if he's so strict about how somebody looks and how much somebody weighs for him to carry them on the back of his shoulders, that should tell you right then and there what this is, that he is a very superficial person and even he's had weight issues in the past but is still projecting them onto how he views and feels about women as if he hasn't had weight issues himself. So I am not confident about this union either because it definitely can also be a hot mess as well. And if and, I, and even if they're together, how does she feel watching this back, hearing these awful things that Shake is saying about her, telling anybody who would listen that he's not attracted to her? See, the difference between first season and this season is somebody would have told, you know, her by now that, hey, Shake isn't into you. Shake is not feeling you. And this would have been a wrap. Um, literally after the honeymoon. It would have been a or pre wedding moon, whatever they call it. This would have been a wrap back then. This would have been an absolute wrap. Shayna is a completely drama-infested season two version of Jessica. 
Honestly, she never liked dude. She only wanted to go through with a proposal because she wanted to try to see Shane on the Mexico trip. That was the only thing. And then once she realized she was going to have to stay a little bit longer, stay the few days or the week or however long that trip to Mexico was before she would see the other couples, she said skip it and packed her bags and left. But it was obvious she was never into this guy. And if you know that religion is one of your deal breakers, why would you knowingly accept a proposal and not only accept a proposal, but accept a proposal when the guy specifically is telling you that he's using a family heirloom, a family's engagement ring that has been passed on from generations and generations. And you knew deep down that religion is one of your deal breakers and is not going to be something something you're going to compromise on. So why did you go through with this? And only explanation that I have is you were trying to see what was up with Shane. You were hoping that if you pretended to continue with the process, you could still get access to Shane. It's the same gameplay. It's the same strategy that Jessica had as it pertained to um, Brett where she felt that Brett and Amanda were not going to be, or not Brett and Amanda, Brett and Amber weren't going to be what she thought they were going to be. So therefore, she thought that, you know, she could fake it as long as she could with Mark, and then maybe something was going to go down to where she could get Brett when it was all said and done. It is the same exact storyline, the same exact gameplay, and, um... And yeah, and her being invited to the one group event, like I, they knew what they were doing. They wanted her to cause the drama. And that's all it was. But she was completely and utterly inappropriate and disrespectful to not only Natalie, but also Shane. Like it was just awful. It was just completely awful. Also, Natalie is an interesting case because... I was confused because really these last few episodes was people meeting the parents, going dress shopping and the grooms um, also getting fitted for their suits as well as bachelor and bachelorette parties. But I was confused with Natalie's approach and how she was going to break to her parents that she got engaged. And I'm just confused as far as what did she even tell her family about the show that she was going to film for? Like, it just seemed very sus. The whole setup, like her meeting up with Shane only to tell Shane, hey, I need you to leave for a little while and get flowers and get dinner while I talk to my parents. What? You haven't been talking to your parents all along and telling them about everything and warning them in advance that, hey, you're going to be meeting the person that I met on the show and you're going to be filmed and this and that. I think it would have been a totally different reaction from the mom had Natalie brought Shane right off the bat to ease a lot of the tension and the drama because the problem was you set it up for them to go off on you. You set it up for them to come to this new place they never been to before because you didn't tell them anything. You didn't tell them that you were going on a show to where if you do select somebody, the expectation is they propose to you and then you get married and you have to decide at the wedding ceremony whether or not you are going to say I do. And during that time period, you live in the same quarters for that period of time. And you're supposed to meet each other's families. The families are supposed to meet each other and everything else leading up to this point so everybody can kind of get familiar with everyone. But instead, you wanted to blindside your own family. Make it make sense. You bring them into an unknown location that they've never been to before. They know it's not your place. They know you didn't upgrade. They know you, you're their daughter. They know if you're lying. And then you drop the bomb like that in front of the cameras without your fiance for support. And have him come in, you know what, in half hour, hour later, after your mom's visibly pissed and disappointed in you and thinks that you're making rash decisions. You should have had Shane from there from the start. You should have told him whatever time you guys planned on meeting up or whatever, like, hey, meet, let's get back to the apartment at five o'clock. 
come with flowers, come with takeout food to go. That way we can go in as a united front, explain that this is our place, explain that we met on a reality show that is designed for you to get engaged. And then also you will have a wedding and at the wedding, you decide whether or not you want to get married to that person. Like it's not rocket science, people. It really is not rocket science. But it was an ambush the way that you did your parents. So in a way, I understand the mom's reaction. And then when you see the reaction, once she gets to know Shane, it's a whole lot better. And then once she gets to know Shane's family, when they show up at the different dress, um, you know, fittings and whatnot, it's a totally different dynamic. And that's what I mean. Like Natalie totally miscalculated that whole situation because that could have went a whole lot worse than it did and she should have had Shane there with her from the start she should have been in communication with her family from the start on what she was doing instead of these ambushes now I understand why her mom acts the way that she does because Natalie is sneaky Natalie hides the wrong information from her family. Therefore, it invokes reactions like the reaction her mother had. And why her mother said that she does rash decisions, because she always lets her mother know after the fact something major has taken place. So that's why her mom feels the way that she does. And I actually think she toned down her reaction. She probably would have went off even more had it not been for the cameras there. But... Natalie completely miscalculated on how to approach that situation. If you already know that your mom doesn't like surprises and doesn't like to be ambushed, why set up an ambush? Why not tell all along what is taking place? That you were on a reality show for a few weeks. The purpose of the reality show, it's a dating reality show that's supposed to lead to marriage. And then the wedding day, you decide yes or no. So by that point, by the time your parents are meeting Shane, they're already familiar with what you just did the past few weeks. And you've already talked him up to your family. But this felt like this is the first time you talked to your family in months. That like you literally went to go film the show and then once you got your phone back and everything else, you just chose not to talk to your parents and just scheduled a random day um, a week before the wedding. Meanwhile, everybody else met each other's families relatively quickly as soon as they got back from Mexico. Like I don't understand. So that was a complete miscalculation on Natalie's part. And had communication been happening ongoing, I do not think that this would have went down the way it initially did. And Shane should have been there from the start for support. Because this really could have been escalated beyond belief. It really could have. It absolutely could have. So I'm not even sure like what is going to happen with them two because at first I thought they seemed like the couple that was going to go the distance. But now we see in the previews that Natalie is crying because they had some big fight right before, you know, either the morning of the wedding or after the bachelor party. Something was said that went too far that crossed the line that has Natalie in tears. And the previous big drama that we saw was, of course, when apparently Shayna told Natalie that if things didn't work out with her and Shane, she had a friend to hook, you know, her up with. And then that caused issues. But here's the thing. You don't joke about things like that either, you know, especially when you have feelings for the person that she's with that you secretly do not want things to work out. So that also is an issue at hand. So we will see what happens. It could all just be for drama and they end up getting married anyways. I don't know, but we'll see. I mean, I feel like for the most part, they had seemed like they were, you know, one of the better matches, but who really knows anymore? Because this season, it's been such a hot mess. Like I said, I can make an argument that none of them get married, that none of them go through with this because that's how chaotic this season has been. 
Everybody in one way or the other has been completely and utterly messy. Which brings me now to Sal and Mallory, you guys. Oh my gosh. It sounds like they have been having nothing but drama and nothing but arguments. And for some reason, the cameras have not caught the th most of it. Or maybe they made some type of agreement not to air certain things. But it started off decent. Then there was some awkwardness. Then Sal confronted Jared about the comments he made when they all the couples had met in Mexico and he asked her why she, you know, that he asked her specifically what type of ring she wanted and she wanted a ring with a gold band and this and that and Sal didn't think it was cool. So Jared's to completely trying to downplay the situation and just say that it was a joke, it was nothing serious, this and that. I call BS. It definitely was serious because why are you concerned with what type of ring Mallory has if you supposedly are into Ayana? You shouldn't care. But this is what happens when you ask a pre-proposal to the person you actually wanted to propose to and because they say no, you go with your second choice. These are the things that happen. So I totally understand from Sal's perspective as to why he felt a certain way. Him and Ayana should feel a certain type of way because that conversation went on too long and it was inappropriate. Just like the conversation that happened with Shane and Shayna was inappropriate. It went on way too long than what it needed to. You don't need to talk to somebody that long um, that you know you secretly have feelings for and you know ask somebody else to marry them. It's just as simple as that. But anyways, of course, we get the whole segment where they're meeting each other's families and this and that. But they're having all kinds of drama. They're having all of these arguments. And it is just crazy. It is absolutely and utterly crazy. And so what happens in one of the arguments, it got so bad that Mallory slept in the other room. And Sal, you know, either slept in the guest room or whatever. But unless, I guess what happened was some girl showed up to Sal's sister's house and was going off, thought the things in her with her and Sal were going to pick right up, I guess, whenever Sal was done filming and must have indicated to this woman that, you know, he was just going away for a little bit, even though they weren't serious. It was serious enough for her to meet his family, but... Again, what does that mean in 2022, you guys? <laughs> like, what is happening? What is happening? So, obviously, Mallory is wondering about this other girl. Like, do, is this something I need to be worried about and concerned about? Because why is she so emotional and basically making it seem like things between the two of you were more than what it was? And Sal said that he's committed to this process and, you know, that he was accepted for this, you know, to be on the show for over a year ago. And he still had intentions of devoting, you know, fully to this whole process. And he told the girl it wasn't this serious. But Mallory had a point in that, you know, how am I supposed to feel special meeting your sisters if everybody's meeting your sisters? If you're telling me there is nothing this serious with this girl, but still she's good enough to meet your sisters and know where your sisters live and know where their house is to cause some drama. So I totally understand why she feels a certain type of way. I would too. It's just wild. Because originally, you know, I felt Mallory wasn't into Sal like she was claiming. I felt she was still holding out for Jared um, or what have you. But now I just don't need it. They are all a mess, it, to be honest with you. Everybody is a mess. And so, you know, Sally does this thing where he like sings to her and he um, cooks, you know, stir fry for her to try to get the romance back on track. And at least it appears that it's on track for now, but we have no idea what's going to happen at this wedding, if this wedding is going to go through or not. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you guys because it's all been so dysfunctional. Usually I would be like, yes, they're for sure going to go through with this. Yes, these two for sure. But I am not confident of any of the couples, to be honest with you. If we're just keeping it a buck, I have zero confidence in any of the couples. And it could be the producers, you know, really just showing us the worst of it. 
Or it really could be something there to where there's more to the story that we're than what we're getting. And we're getting like the PG version of what the real drama is. So it could be anything. I would think Mallory and Sal would go through with it because she keeps talking about how much she loves him and how she's been able to be her most authentic self with him. Um, I felt that was very prominent and a profound statement to make. Um, however, I just don't know. I don't know how serious this thing is with this other girl. Um, I'm hoping it's not. I'm hoping, like I said, it was just a fling and, you know, she was in her feelings or maybe she was expecting something more and then it blew up in her face and now she doesn't know how to act. But I am hoping that Mallory and Sal work it out. I just feel like, I don't know. It just, there's just something off. I feel like Sal and Ayana would have been so much better match for each other. I feel like they actually are the ones that are compatible. And, um, I don't know. So, because I felt like in a moment, I felt that Mallory finally find how to reason to use this as an opportunity to dump Sal. And she basically said as much as if the, if there's anything else that goes down, she's out. She's done. But I do think that they will end up going through with the marriage. But like I said, I have zero confidence overall in all these couples. But I think they might go through with it. Um, we will see. We will see. Um, and now on to my sometimes faves because Ayana is always my fave. But Jared, it's a toss up. It really is a toss up. Um, so there's a lot of underlying issues I've realized with this couple. And I knew from the start it would be because of the fact that essentially Ayana is Jared's second choice. No matter if he wants to admit to it or not, Ayana knows that she's the second choice because you don't pre propose to somebody else if you didn't have the intention of going through with an actual proposal. Like it just <laughs> like make it make sense. And then you tell the second girl that you already pre-proposed to another woman. So how is she supposed to feel? What is she supposed to make about that? So it is just incredible, you guys. It is absolutely incredible. But the issue is Jared is still living like a single man. And mind you, his father is a minister. His father wants to marry him and Ayana. You know, everybody does the thing. They meet the family. I was a little confused by Ayana's parents because they kind of didn't look too much older than her. So I was completely lost. I was like, are these your siblings? Like, what is happening? Because <laughs> they look like older siblings or something because you guys don't look too far off age-wise. So that was pretty interesting. But the big, there are two big issues where um, essentially Ayana feels like she is still second choice and second best. And Jared up until this point has not said or done anything to make her not feel less than. And then Jared is still functioning like a single guy, still going out at least three times a week, coming home at all hours of the night, just leaving, um, you know, Miss Ayana alone to her so thoughts, alone by herself. And then we hear Jared's side of things that he tells his friends his concerns about the finances and all these things that Ayana wants to do cost her money. So that tells me there that you liked Dollar Tree J-Lo because she was already established in her career. She already had her own. So basically, you could just hang out and be a house husband for her. But the opposite is going to take place with Ayana. You're going to have to work, buddy, because she's going to be trying to be busy trying to get her career off the ground, trying to make some moves. So I felt I knew he felt a certain type of way about that. He has an issue. There's some type of financial issue that is happening that he's not letting on. But he was very much comfortable to be a house husband for Dollar Tree J-Lo. He definitely was. So that is where we are. That is where we are. And, you know, they keep having the same conversation over and over and over again where Jared's like, yeah, I need to change. Yeah, I need to stop going out. But then he still goes out <laughs> like like, like it's, are you just automatically going to turn off the switch because of a wedding? Like, I don't know. I'm just not seeing it. I am not seeing him change. I just don't think he's serious about this. 
I think he signed up for this as a result of the near-death experience. And he just wanted to have somebody, right? But I don't know if he's invested as he's claiming he is because his actions aren't matching his words by any stretch. And the, the biggest issue that they have, they don't have actual arguments or fights because they avoid them. Ayana's keeping bottled up her true feelings of feeling second best, of her feeling that she's going to be rejected at the altar, of her feeling that Jarrett has not made the changes that he claimed that he was going to make to show her that she's the priority. Jarrett secretly still wants Mallory, still wants a woman who's already established, doesn't want to have to go into his pockets or go into debt um, in order for Ayana to further herself and further her career heading into the marriage. And that's just what it is. But they're afraid to tell each other this. So it's going to blow up at some point in time. So if I was Ayana, I would run for the hills. I would want no parts of this because if you're having doubts and you feel that you're not being treated the way you need it to be, and if you still feel like you're being treated as second best and you're crying like that at the supposed bachelorette party, like that should tell you what the sign is. That should tell you to run, to run for the hills and never turn back. So we will see. We will see you guys this upcoming week. Who gets married and who doesn't. And I will definitely react. I will definitely react. But like I said, I have low confidence for most of <laughs> most of the couples because it is so chaotic and dysfunctional. Like at least with what we saw with Lauren and Cameron, there was a genuine effort on both of their parts. And they really wanted to make it a point to integrate each other's families, to really make it work and really make it known and show each other, yes, we are serious about each other. Yes, we are going to address whatever potential issues and elephant in the room and this and that. We're really going to try to make this a thing. And, and, and here they are. They're still married, just like Amber and Brett are and everything else. Like, it's a totally different vibe from season one. And there's less episodes. We had 14 episodes season one, and we only have 10 this season. So that tells me right there, either they didn't get enough drama, or there was too much drama and dysfunction, and we're not going to see that many successful weddings. Because why do we only have 10 episodes? Like, I don't understand. So it'll be very interesting, like I said, to see what comes of this, what ends up happening next week. But like I said, I have very low confidence just based off of everything that's happened. It's been too dysfunctional. And, and honestly, here's the thing. It's one thing if it was just like maybe one or two couples that you kind of said, uh, yeah, I see this isn't going to work. But the fact that all couples, there's an argument for none of them to, you know, be successful, that's pretty scary already in your second season. That's not a good sign. At all. And actually, it had appeared that Shane and Natalie were one of the stronger couples and Nick, I didn't really, you know, believe him um, when he kept trying to say that him and Danielle were the strongest couple. And I'm like, well, why do you need to verbalize that? Like, usually when you're a good couple and you have a good foundation and everything else, you don't have to brag about it. It's unspoken. Right? But at the time... I thought that the strongest couples by far were Shayna and um, Natalie, as well as Jared and Ayana, even with their issues. But even now, after these last set of episodes, I just don't even know anymore. I have no idea what to expect heading into this finale, you guys. I really don't. I mean, I would like it if some of these couples did work out, but I just don't know. Because it's just red flags everywhere. Red flags Everywhere, every conversation, every interaction, it is all red flags. 
And I just don't know, even if any of these couples did go through with a marriage, seeing it back now, seeing some of the things that are being said about them, I don't know if that's enough to come back from. So I am very curious, even if some of these couples do get married, I want to know what the vibes are for the reunion, what the reunion special is going to look like for these couples. Because that's when we're going to get the true tea of what's really going on. So that is all the thoughts that I have. Please let me know what you guys think. Did you have you guys been watching season two? Are you guys enjoying the season at all? Did you still like season one better than season two? What are your guys' thoughts? Like I said, I feel like everything is chaos this season. And I'm even stressed. And I'm not even the one that's even a part of this process. And I'm stressed out for them. Because that's how um, much it's just been a roller coaster this entire season. Like every single episode has just been nothing but drama and dysfunction and chaos. So hopefully there's a happy ending for somebody. But I just don't know. Even if they say yes, even if they all say yes, I still don't know. I still don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> like that's because it's just been so wild. It has been a very wild journey for everybody involved this season. And everything at one point or another has been messy, has been dysfunctional, has been out of control. So we shall see what happens. Like Shayna introducing her family to a guy she knew she had no romantic interest in. And the guy hearing her family shade him on the way out the door. <laughs> like, like, why? Why even subject yourself to the nonsense? Why? So we will see what happens, you guys. Please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you're notified the moment I post new content on my channel. And with that being said, I will talk to you guys again very soon.